people by setting up this house specifically for like-minded business owners. And because his fake identity, Scott, doesn't have a good credit score, he just found someone to co-sign it. What do you think? Bro, I'm a, I feel like just fucking clicking off this video. Like, honestly, it's just getting me mad, bro. Millionaire goes homeless to prove anyone can make $1 million. So before the video even starts, I'm gonna go ahead and say this is cap. So I'm a little confused with the title. Is it homeless people can make a million dollars? Or is it you can hit rock bottom, become homeless, and recover and make a million dollars? You know what I mean? I'm a little bit confused on that, but regardless, bro, I think this video is gonna be cap. But let's get into it. Let's see what he's talking about. <laughs> Today has been really tough. This is uh, my bench right here. I'm gonna be sleeping on tonight, so. Uh -huh. This is Mike Black, the millionaire who went homeless with the goal to make $1 million from nothing in only 12 months while documenting the entire journey. Wait, he's a millionaire? Mike Black. The Wait, bro, this shit was in the title. What am I doing? My bad, bro. This is the first video of the day, you know what I mean? With the goal Let me to get into this $1 million from nothing in only My 12 months. headphones going out, while bro. documenting the entire journey online for everyone there we to go. see. I'm cutting off my entire network. I'm draining my bank account to zero dollars. I'm leaving behind my seven figure business, putting all my belongings in storage, and I won't even have a place to live. This is the million dollar comeback. Did you know the project is gonna be like this? No, everything was a curveball. This is my one pair of clothes that I'm taking with me. I have Day a one. cell phone oh, and yeah. I have a backpack with camera gear. The keys are officially turned in. The project has started. Now I gotta figure out what the f to do. What Mike didn't know at the time was that this was going to be the toughest year of his life. But why did he decide to do it? I'm gonna try to panhandle and make a couple bucks. I'm not worried about food at all. I can go a couple days without eating. Hey, how are you? I was wondering, do you have any like water cups by any chance? Finally, someone nice enough to give me some water. See, it was the beginning of 2020 and countless people had lost everything. And he wanted to be a living example that you can make a comeback even at your lowest point. But could he really reach $1 million in 12 months again? Okay, okay, okay. So I think that explained my question earlier, right? Hitting your lowest point and then able to recover still. But I mean, bro, I, I think the title was just for clickbait. You know what I mean? But I, I think I understand the message that he's trying to say. But I mean... People reading the th the title, bro, that, that shit is gonna, you know, they're gonna. I feel like these are gonna get a lot of hate because nobody, not anyone, I can make a million dollars. You know what I mean? Message me on Craigslist that said, like, what's the fucking. Bucks. If I let them. I started thinking. What? Like, what? Everything I tried didn't work. I did have someone message me on Craigslist that said, they'll give me a, a hundred bucks. If I let them. I started thinking, like, I'm gonna be sleeping on the streets a lot longer than I thought. I don't know if I can do this. All right, so it's 11 o'clock. Didn't make any money. My bench right here that uh, I'm gonna be sleeping on tonight, so. But there was no going back now. He had publicly committed all over social media, hired an entire production team, and this was about something bigger than just himself. The goal of the project was to help as many people as possible. So giving up was never an option. But things took a turn. Something amazing happened. Out of nowhere, like this kid hit me up and said like, hey man, you can crash here. Offered to drive 30 minutes to uh... That's bullshit, bro. See, this shit is already not realistic. I, so he said it out of nowhere, some kid messaged me. That shit is not gonna happen, bro. Like, that's... He said he has a whole production team behind him, too. And it's like, bro, he's already a millionaire. You know what I mean? So it's, that's why I said it was going to be, this is going to be a cat video because regardless, they could just edit this shit out that he could film this shit. Right. And then as soon as the camera cuts, bro, he's back to his fucking mansion or whatever. You know what I mean? And either way, he's not, he doesn't really understand like what it would be to be homeless. Right. Because he always, he has a phone off the bat. That's already a fucking, uh, uh, not fair. You know what I mean? Unfair advantage, but. Like, he he has a backup plan, you know what I mean? He, he doesn't feel like what being homeless would really be like. You don't have people you could just call and say, oh, they hit me up. No, you call them. You probably tell them, oh, can I sleep here? Like, you know what I mean? Like, he, he always has something to fall back on with homeless people, bro. Most homeless people don't even get looked at, bro. You know what I mean? They're, like, invisible to most people. When they ask for changes and stuff, bro, people just blow them away. So, he's not going to feel the true effect, but. Pick me up. Oh man, this is just 
I'm just really emotional how nice of an act this was. Like I promise you, I will repay you for all of this. Okay, um, thank you. I mean, you don't have to, but... Just thank you so much. Of course, of course, of course. Uh, this is the RV that I slept in last night. Why did I think, like, a, it was a whole week or something had passed at least, bro? That was day one. He's crying because it's tough. Bro hasn't even had 24 hours yet. <laughs> bro, this is going to be a fucking... a short window of opportunity to get back on his feet. I still have one pair of clothes. Look how gross. So after one day, he was crying how hard he's going to be, bro. So he had to make some money, but this time, he had a plan. What I started doing is just taking ads on Craigslist in the free section, putting it on Facebook Marketplace, and selling it for a profit. I acted as the middleman, handling all the logistics between the buyer and the seller. And it worked. I just sold my first couch for a hundred bucks. Although this was literally on How do you get the transportation? How is he able to the gas, the truck to pick it up? You know what I mean? Like they're not only 0.01% towards the final goal. So With that, he was finally able to buy some clothes, some decent food after not eating for days, and most of Not not even for homeless people, right? Just for a general people don't have, you know, a truck and shit and like this is just like an unrealistic situation. On day three, he made a whopping. I just feel like there's a lot of stuff going on behind the scenes. You know what I mean? Hey, Mike, what do you got there? That's a nice computer. Yeah, that's just a brand new used Chromebook. I'm gonna take that. Oh, it's just not working. But Mike had to figure out how to get his own place because Isaac, the guy who helped him on day one and now lived with in the RV, still had no idea about the project and who Mike really was because he was going undercover as right. Scott. Yeah, so there's no idea who he is. He just hit him up out of nowhere. Found out, Mike would have to he didn't find him on his Instagram the promoting the fucking project, project or whatever, right? And then he'd be back on the streets again. So he had to get more Benjamins into his bank account. I applied to 10 different jobs in one night, and the next day I woke up and I had three interviews. So he spent the last $40 he had to join. Uh, like, again, bro, this shit is just super unrealistic, right? That's what everybody wants to tell you to homeless people, right? I'll get a job, get a job. You think they're going to hire, you know, someone who looks like they've been living on the street for that long, smells? Clothes all raggedy, bro. You, it's not that easy. But again, like it's it's the it's the fucking title that gets me messed up, man. Because it, it if you're just reading this at first, it makes you think that this is like homeless people could do this, right? But bro, it's even with normal people, bro. It's not that easy. Space, you know what I mean? Could use much better computers and start trading time for money, even if that means working as a telemarketer for only ten dollars an hour. Twenty-five dollars an hour working for a law firm is a virtual assistant. So what day are we on? This five? Would you be cool with this all happened in, in four and days after him? Delivery. I'll give you the majority of everything. Getting I picked up by a random ever, ever. person. You heard it, dude. I could flip this bike, by the way. It sells for like 300, 400 bucks. Flip. How do you get the bike? Just left the thrift store. Got all these shirts. You looking for a, a sugar daddy? Hit me up. Two hundred twenty bucks. But still, with all this work, he was barely getting by. For the first time, my bank actually overdrew i was not expecting this to take this long for me to get out of this situation until things got even are we, worse aren't we on day what fucking day are we on bro this is day five you were expected to hit a million dollars in, in five this days footage, but derby had gotten a cockroach from homeless it was this? really bad imagine trying to sleep in a place where there's cockroaches everywhere you imagine them crawling on you well one night i don't have to imagine that shit bro that shit happened that's real life when you're not a millionaire and you're living in poverty bro that's just normal shit Yo, we don't have to imagine Sat that shit. Up, I'm done. I will not live here another week. He just had to get one client for some service that would pay him a few grand. I literally just spent all weekend. I sent so many sales proposals until he finally got someone to pay him so for just... monthly marketing services. 1500 bucks. Dopamine just blasting through my head. I, I have money now. So he was able to move out of the RV into a small shared room. And to come full circle, now he could finally repay Isaac by helping him sell the RV for $2,000 more than he expected. I bought a MacBook for him is a thank you present paid for by my business. I was gonna pay for two flights to Germany because he really wanted to go to Germany. Just thank him for everything and then he just stopped responding to my texts. Who knows, maybe he reaches out now. If he's this is the bro, the biggest cap. So, so this random dude, right? Random dude picked you up, helped you when you were at your lowest. And now that you made some money and you want to fly him to Germany and give him a laptop. Now he doesn't respond. 
How does that shit even make sense? Why would he not respond when you're trying to give him stuff? And why would he even give you some time of day when you have nothing, bro? It's fucking cap. I want those Germany tickets. <laughs> but in order to eventually reach the $1 million milestone, he had to build a real business. Ideally, okay, a scalable 58. one, like an e-commerce company. Almost two I am months. at the farmer's market here. I'm looking for people that are selling product that I can maybe partner with and sell online. And after making some connections with a manufacturer and looking at trends, he decided on a very specific niche, a coffee brand for dog lovers that donates a percentage of What office is he in? Dogs. Did he even, did did he even say that? that How did he just get into a random office? Everything. I was spending... Um, I'm guessing it's not the place where he was working the telemarketing, right? On production and marketing and running the production team alone while I was homeless in the beginning of the project. I remember being in meetings with the guys and I'd be like, I haven't eaten today. I don't have money to get back to the RV park. I got to get cab, out of this meeting bro. and you guys have to figure it out because if I don't flip a couch today, I have to sleep at the office. We need to shoot quick overview. What are the chances you guys think he actually followed through on his whole, um, like, plans, right, I guess? Because I could guarantee, right now, I almost guarantee you that as soon as the camera shut off for his project for that shit, bro, he was, you know, leaving his his normal life as a millionaire, bro. I could guarantee that shit. There's no way he was fully sticking, committing to to the homeless animator act season. or whatever he was trying to You're spending 25 grand a month on production. $25,000 burned per month on producing the project and marketing it paying for it out of his own pockets. I only spent one hour on my business. This has been a consistent theme. I'm not gonna be able to build a million dollar business like that. How much money have you made so far? It's, it's underwhelming. You're making less than minimum wage. <laughs> you feel like a failure. I can't be working all these hours. I, I, I need to build my business. Do you feel Ooh. the pressure of having people look at you, of potentially failing in public? Does that keep you up at night? I'm so tired. I just got word. The client decided to, I guess, fire us. He had to get really strategic with his time and money. So this is, that's not part of the, from zero to a million, right? That's part of his actual business that he runs. So, um, why are they mixing it, you know, as part of this video? They should have left that shit aside and just focused. This should have just fully, solely been on the, on his homeless to one million. To invest more into launching the e-commerce Because here he's spending 25 grand a month, bro. That shit's confusing, you know what I mean? If he's trying to be homeless. Or start from zero. Jay, Jay, there's you logged two and a half hours. You said you're gonna log a full day today, dude. We need to get this site up. Oh God, I've never gotten that pissed. It's starting to get to the point where I'm like, my hand over my head, being able to hit this goal. I don't feel like I'm, I'm far enough. But out of desperation, Mike came up with a brilliant idea. They would not just cut his biggest expense, but might actually make him money. I am finding a location. Let's say it's $4,000 a month to rent. I'm going to rent out four of the bedrooms for $1,000 a month. So it pays for the place. And then that fifth bedroom I would get for free. That is what I call rent hacking. This is a four. <laughs> this shit just keeps getting worse. How are you going to get approved? Well, I'm guessing he's going to use his his uh seven figure business income to get approved right but, but that's you know you shouldn't be meshing the two your two separate lives right you should if you're if for this project you're starting from zero you shouldn't include you know your seven figure business to get a place like this bro because this shit is just not realistic right four thousand dollars to rent a month you got to make three times the rent to get approved don't you from for most people and you got to have a good credit score that is not fucking realistic for the average person story place. This is going to be my room. Walk-in closet here. This would be my bathroom. I'd be going from RV park to this. Three months. I made this like a podcast yeah, room. Yeah, three months and he's only made about, what, less than $7,000. So how the fuck are you? He doesn't even have three months rent to cover this shit, bro. Like, come on. Something. Wow, this place is big. He makes it valuable by setting up this house specifically for like-minded business owners. And because his fake identity, Scott, doesn't have a good credit score, he just found someone to co-sign it. What do you think? Bro, I'm not, I feel like just fucking clicking off this video. Like, honestly. This shit is getting me mad, bro. Oh, he did. Ah, fake identity. No credit score. Let me just go on the street and find a dude who's probably making like what over 10 grand a month to co-sign this fucking house doesn't know me at all right he doesn't know me at all he's just gonna co-sign my house 
Bro, the f oh shit, this is fucking, this pissed me off. I'm not gonna it's lie. It's like a fair percentage of profit to do for you doing like the credit. Because his fake identity, Scott, doesn't have a good credit score. He just found someone to co sign. Look, hear how he said this shit so fucking casually. Like, this could just happen for anybody. Fake identity, Scott, doesn't have a good credit score. He just found someone. He just to found somebody on the street. What do you think? Who's gonna co sign him a fucking percentage of 4, to do for you doing like the credit partner stuff? Monthly, All right, I got. The official lease. How cool is it that I went from living in an RV to this place? Rent free, plus I would make money. And also, the coffee brand was finally ready to launch. Oh, we're in business. We got coffee, baby. We got our first coffee order ever. This time, four months ago, guys, I was thinking about sleeping. So it was six, less than seven grand in three months. He was able to get a house, rent it out to other tenants, live rent free, and start an e-commerce business all in the span of three months starting from zero with less than seven like come on bro this shit just are you even trying to make this shit seem realistic he's on a bench if you're like i hate my job i fucking can't stand my fucking job quit save up some money downsize seven grand quit. that's all i need seven Figure grand out what you want to do and with roughly nine months left, maybe it was still possible to reach the million dollar milestone. There's a lot of people that have built a company in nine months, have gone into a million dollars. I'm healthy, my family's healthy, that's all that matters. Yeah, at least it's in my lungs, my liver. My dad is the single most important person to me in my life. The typical survival rate for that is 14%, what I was told was like 12 to 18 months. Believe it or not, yes, it could be better but also be much worse. To me, I'm the luckiest guy in the world. <laughs> 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 I'll fight, Michael. The fight begins. Don't, don't get upset. And here we see where Mike got his unwavering optimism from his dad. He gets a terminal diagnosis and still considers himself to be the luckiest man in the world. After months of struggling, overcoming homelessness, working 100 hour weeks to run an entire production team and trying to make a million dollars at the same time, now this happened. This was real life now. Mike had a decision to make. Continue the project or quit. Some things are gonna change because I'm gonna be moving home to spend time with my dad. We're gonna figure it out, you know? This is what happens in life. It was like life was testing Mike, whether you could actually be a leader, live by the message of the project and overcome this adversity. You get dealt cards, you have to play the hand that you're dealt. His dad wanted him to continue because now this was actually about more than just making a million dollars. It was about living by the values his dad taught him, making the best out of every situation, even in times of struggle. And it lit a fire inside of him. And I wrote it down. I wanted 20,000 DMs, people reaching out saying, you impacted my life in a positive way. That's all I wanted. So could he still reach the $1 million goal now that things got even more challenging? And I want to make that very, very clear. Like, I don't think I was going to hit it. But they had a pretty good plan. Coffee is one of these consumables that people buy again and again if they love your brand. So setting up a monthly subscription would be a game changer. And if they could acquire new customers to try out their products, they might become long-term repeat. Bro, so is this for his actual seven-figure business or is this the shit he wants to start from the project, I guess, you know what I mean? Like, I feel like they really fucked it up when they started merging the two things in this thing, bro, right? He said he was spending 25 grand a month. Was that on this project or whatever, or? It's, it's, Smile. They just lost me when they started merging the two things together. They should've kept it 100% separate. Almost 3,200 followers. Holy shit. Wait, what? I think and a tick long term repeat bias. Smile, dance. We put up our first TikTok and a TikTok went semi viral. Almost 3,200 followers. Holy shit. What? I think we got our first coffee club subscription. While I was driving, Etsy order, Etsy order. $34,221. Our ad account got disabled. This is what I do when I'm angry. So I made a list of things I'm grateful for. The first is Mark Zuckerberg. I'm grateful for big tech. So now I feel better. Things now started moving faster, but that also created more problems. Mike was still juggling way too many things, spending only five hours a week on the e-commerce company, trying to squeeze in family time, making content to document the million dollar comeback and researching cancer to help his dad. So far, he had spent $250,000 on producing the project and the channel still hadn't taken off. His goal to impact 20,000 people seemed impossible with only a few hundred views per video. So that was like a layer of stress. Kept having to get the team pumped up. Like guys, we'll get these views eventually. Until his own health started declining as well. 
Throughout the entire project, we haven't shared it with you, but I've been in and out of the doctor's office. I actually have two autoimmune diseases, even started developing a tumor on my hip. It's gotten to the point where I'm in pain every single day. Health, wealth, relationships, everything in my life is at the lowest point. I wanna talk about the project real quick. I don't know if I should keep doing it. I really should be helping out my dad with his business. My dad leaves the business, the business is totally done. Should he end the project now? He was still far from hitting the $1 million goal and having a big impact. But then he got a message from a stranger that changed everything. Again with this stranger shit, bro. Like, no, it's not a fucking stranger. You know, you guys set this shit up. There was a guy. Like, why are you guys being so project, disingenuous? He out. I need to get on a call with you. Gets on the call and he literally just starts crying. And he's like, dude, I was going to kill myself. I came across your content. It just gave me hope. That was the best feeling I've ever felt in my entire life. If he ended it now with only $65,000 made and one person he. Okay. So how long is that? So he was at day like. What? What's that? Three months he made seven grand. Okay. Three months, seven thousand. Let me do the math on this real quick. So now we're at what day? What? If he ended it now with only sixty-five thousand. Okay, so let's do two ninety-seven minus three months. We'll see ninety. Two hundred and seven days. Okay. So in the span of like seven months, he made what was it? Uh, fifty-seven grand. So he went from making what about? couple thousand a month in the first three months is just i don't know we're making like 300 dollars a day come on bro thousand dollars made and one person he deeply impacted would the project be a failure or a success i wanted to help people that were struggling get back on their feet and prove that it could be done a lot of things about this situation suck but i'm in control of how i see things throughout all of this no matter how hard life hit him he made the best of everything and lived by the message he truly believed. That's what true leaders do. So he decided to end the project early to focus on fixing his own health and spending more time with his dad. And now he's doing a lot better and things are going really, really well. And who knows? Maybe now with this video, Mike is able to impact 20,000 people. So if you can tell already, um, I thought this video was completely bullshit, bro. Like, it, it. I think I understand what he was initially trying to do, like his message, right? But this shit was so like poorly executed. It, it like it, it gave away the mixed signals that I initially thought was gonna happen, right? So I thought maybe this was millionaire goes homeless to prove anyone can make a million dollars, which is like going homeless people could do this too, right? But the amount of fucking handouts and bullshit that he just fucking went on this video, bro, right? What was it? On the first day, he just found a random dude to pick him up. Give him a place to live, food, water, everything, bro. A random dude, right? Random. And then what else? He started flipping couches, which even having the phone to begin with, right? That's super unfair, bro. How many homeless people or people starting from literally zero have a, a phone with service and a whole bunch of like computer gear? So that was already a unfair advantage. Then he started flipping couches, right? Where do you get the truck? Where do you get the money to buy the fucking couch? Oh no, he said he got it for free, right? Flip it to 100. Okay, okay, that's fine. But where did he get the truck, right? The the gas to go pick it up and do all this, clean it, you know, get it refurbished or whatever he did to sell it. And the biggest fucking thing was the house, bro. Like, you he made less than 7,000 in the first three months. And then I don't know where he just goes house hunting, finds a random dude who wants to co-sign him a house. That costs four thousand a month to rent. Oh, that's bullshit. That's that's complete fucking bullshit. That shit is not gonna happen. Who's how are you gonna find a dude who makes over ten grand a month to co-sign a house a house that costs four grand a month to rent? Cause you gotta have three times the income, right? You gotta have the credit score. So you, you how are you just gonna randomly find a dude on the street who trusts you enough to do that kind of stuff, bro? Like, uh, I think they I think they messed it up with this video by going homeless. He shouldn't have gone homeless, bro. He should have just gone. Oh, maybe I lost. A lot of my money or stuff like that during the pandemic or maybe i lost my business or whatever okay but let me just start from zero like from from where i'm at i think this was just a perfect example like a rich person trying to force themselves to experience hardship and they never will like truly you know what i mean even with this project going homeless he was homeless for like 10 hours you know what i mean and he just randomly called a dude or or put it on instagram hey can somebody let me you know what i mean like this shit is bullshit bro if you're homeless nobody's gonna pay you attention nobody's gonna give you any time of day and like just the emotional effects right of being homeless 
is gonna is gonna have on you. You're he's not gonna experience that. He will never experience that, bro. Because even through all this shit, right? He had a full production team following him around, talking to him, helping him. When you're homeless, bro, you got nothing. Literally nothing. No food, no water. You're complete. It's by yourself. You're lonely. And that loneliness is kind of what drives you crazy, right? This shit was a fucking joke, how after one day, he was crying, bro. He was crying after 10 hours of being on the streets. How the fuck you think someone was doing that shit for a whole year? Maybe even a decade of, of doing that is going to feel. I feel like they had the right intentions, right, of making this video on this project or whatever, but I just feel like they executed it really poorly. Or the editing choices they made of mixing in his actual business and all these handouts, random handouts he just got where it's complete bullshit. I honestly found this video to be very disrespectful towards people who actually experience hardships, like actual hardships, and excluding the stuff he did with his, you know, he found out with his dad and stuff, right? Because that, that is real life. Like you said, that's real life. Everything up to that point was complete bullshit. So when he finally experienced some real life things, you know, situations, that's where we saw how it actually affected him and how he kind of changed from, oh, okay, maybe, you know, making this million dollars and shit isn't really important because... You know, when you experience sickness or, you know, something like health happens to one of your, somebody you care about, that actually changes a lot. But as far as the actual project they were going for, I, I think they failed because for one, like I said, he should have been by himself on the street for real. No crew behind him, just him and a camera, right? Filming himself, actually living it how he would in real life if that was the situation. Like I said, I feel like they had the right intentions of making this video with the ideas and stuff, but they just executed it very poorly. Right, with all these situations and shit just being super unrealistic. Like they clearly have no idea how it really is to experience these kind of hardships. They just wanted to, you know, make this video, I guess, promote his channel or whatever he wanted, wanted to get 20 20k subscribers, right? But this was just honestly truly disrespectful to anybody who's been in that kind of situation or has experienced those kind of hardships, having nowhere to sleep, no food. No money, no nothing. You know what I mean? This is kind of just slapping the face to people like us. Would you guys let me know down below what you guys thought? Am I just being too harsh or you guys let me know, all right? But that's going to do it for this one. So I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.